Dr. Will and Dr. Eric are going to talk about some of the collaborations they're doing in cancer care and research. And also, we get the opportunity to hear about the, the history of the Global Health Catalyst Summit and why it is important in bridging the healthcare disparities in the world. So, you know, I mean, the Global Health Catalyst Summit uh, is just one part of a program at Harvard that we started, the Global Health Catalyst, which is really a program that bridges disparities. So it's about bringing people from developing countries here and then finding collaborators here. The reason for that because if you are born with cancer, you know, somewhere in Mozambique or Cameroon or Nigeria, you know, uh, you may not have access to care. If you are born uh, with cancer on the street down Longwood Avenue right here in Harvard Medical School, uh, you have so many options. You know, you have so many options. And so, but how can you because of no fault of your own, where, where you're born. You don't decide where you're born. You know? So that's an injustice that we've thought, you, know, you have to bridge that disparity. And so to do that, the best way to close that is to kind of collaborate. Um, so that's what, you know, so this is funded by Harvard, several institutions here at, at Harvard, and the goal is to kind of create collaborations to eliminate disparities. So, you know, and it also involves, a very unique part of it involves engaging the diaspora. So you may have heard about the whole idea of brain drain, you know, you and I are here because, you know, because we have left, you know, there's nothing that can happen back home because of the brain drain. But with, uh, I mean, somebody mentioned that today during the talk with globalization and with uh, information and communication technologies, you can sit here and you can do stuff, you know, 4,000 miles away. And so we've been able to find a platform here where, you know, we can still, like diaspora, um, contribute back in Africa and, and make a big difference. And so uh, I can tell you about a number of things that we're doing. Um, but Dr. Eric, you know, uh, actually, we had a phone call the other day, and it was very interesting that we said we had the CEO of a multi-million dollar company here who is from Cameroon. And they had the top scientists, uh, and two scientists from Harvard and Baylor, you know, from Cameroon, talking about how they can work together to make an impact back in Africa. Okay, so that's the brain power of Africa, literally here, making the U.S. economy grow, you know, healing patients, doing science here, that's benefiting patients here. But now we're really looking at how we can collaborate to work back in Africa. I thought that was really powerful. Um, and I can he should talk a little bit about the project that we are doing, so I don't take up all the time. But I'm very excited about, that's a unique thing about this. There's no conference where you have, you know, a diaspora elevated to the point where, you know, they're actually looking at how they can give back in healthcare, which affects all of us, you know. So that's a unique thing about the conference. The last thing I would say is that uh, we also really leverage information and communication technologies where, you know, we've built this cancer center in the cloud where it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you have a computer, you know, you can just log on there, and you can get consultation, you can get training, you can even do what we're just talking about doing a clinical trial, um, Oxford, Harvard and African institutions, you know, which are all controlled remotely. And so that's something that we're very excited about, using information and communication technologies to bridge the geographic barriers. And uh, Dr. Eric, tell us about the significance of the Global Health Catalyst Summit and how you fit into all of this. Yeah, so, I mean, this is my fourth, fourth Global Health Catalyst <laughs> Summit. And um, over the years, I know Will and I have bounced a few ideas between us. But what really struck us this time and which we really want to go into is phytomedicine. Um, all of us growing up in Africa, when we were sick, most of the time is that our parents would go behind the house, so they contact somebody, they will get some uh, leaves, they cook them, and we'll, <laughs> we'll take those out, and we'll feel better. Yeah, yeah so what we really, in the, sc in the scope of uh, the Global Health Catalyst, what we want to do is that, that we know that these plants, they have a lot of good activity, but there's no scientific proof that you can get those into the mainstream pharmaceuticals or get them through regulation so that it can be uh, approved for use in the bedside. So what we, the work we're trying to do this time is that one uh, as uh, uh, Will has done with other, with the other, in the other areas, he's trying to bring in both scientists and industry who are going to work together. And as I said, we had a phone call with one of our friends who is a 
He has a, he's in the in, his industry. Both of us are in, are in academia. So we're going to put together, harness our resources. Right. And then we have some, or, uh, already have some compounds that are interesting. And we're going to work together to push them through the pipeline. Together. That's interesting. I had a conversation with the ambassador for food security, Pan African uh, Parliament, and uh, she was talking about the vi we were talking about the vital medicine. And uh, it's interesting that again you bring up this conversation because of when we look at healthcare in Africa, uh, most the biggest percentage of primary health care is ethnomedicine. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we discussed that with the ambassadors. We're actually thinking of putting out. Uh, you know, an op-ed, basically, or a statement coming out of the ambassadors who were sitting here today, you know, and the whole idea that that can actually be a way uh, to stimulate not just healthcare, but economic development, mm -hmm. right? So we've seen that, you know, like with the project that we talked about here, if you create that kind of thing, you're going to give those women jobs. Right. You're going to give men jobs. You're going to give people jobs there. And then you also develop um, remedies that are accessible from the local population, which means that it's not high expensive drugs that are made here in the United States and you have to go and begging for them to, to make discounts. Uh, we actually developed that from there and actually can bring it to the United States and sell it here, right? Yeah. Um, so that would define the medicines, but also creating economic development. So that's something that, like you mentioned, we really need to work with government uh, who can create those. That's a very good idea. That's what basically I'm saying. And these ambassadors are very enthusiastic about that. And we hope that, you know, actually the follow up of this summit is that we are going to be traveling to these countries and they want to facilitate that. Um, and, you know, bringing the power of science and industry, bringing that there with healthcare providers, you know, to kind of find ways where we can actually stimulate healthcare development there that's accessible. This yeah. is exciting because last year I was actually a speaker at the Global Health, the, uh, the Wakanda panel. Yeah, and my, <laughs> I talked about the, using ethno medicine to bridge the healthcare gap, uh, you know, the indigenous knowledge, because we were raised on indigenous knowledge. You know, our healthcare was, like you mentioned, getting hubs from the, from the back of the house to, you know, and one of the examples, actually, my presentation was based on one picture, one image. It was of my grandmother sitting outside on a mat, which was made out of palm leaves. And beside her, or behind her, was a plant we call omjaja. I think it's omnisimum. I forget the scientific, but it was, we used it, we still use it, for um, tummy aches. You know, you, if you had a tummy ache, just get omjaja, make a cup of tea with omjaja, and drink, and you have no gas in your tummy, you know? So the, my presentation was about just uh, going back to those indigenous ways and then just research them to work out, you know, identify the dosages, the right dosages, because that's the conversation that, oh, maybe the dosage is wrong. And recently, I, again, I was mentioning it to somebody else. I was in Uganda and there was a, an organization, I think it was Theta Uganda, that was having a project with the herbalists. So the doctors, the medical doctors would Part, it would work with the herbalists to, so that medical doctors would diagnose, you know, the, the, in a professional way. And then they would ask the herbalists to administer their solutions or whatever they did. And then the doctors would observe the patients in a room. You know, they, they wouldn't leave the facility just not to distort the research. And it was amazing. And I was thinking to myself, why can't the, you know, the diaspora rise up and right. engage in that kind of research and collaboration to help our people? They cannot afford drugs. They are yeah. dying. So this is exciting. I can't tell you how excited I am. Right. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, I think uh, we already made an allusion to this that um, one of the drivers that really drives us is for us to be able to bring these remedies in a much purer form at an affordable cost to our people. And one other thing that we have noticed, which is really what also drives us, is the intellectual property. Oh, yeah. So sometimes 
these, they use all of these remedies. And then someone from the West comes with the knowledge and then takes away everything. I think what Global Health Catalyst can do is that they would, can act as a, an observer or somebody who can like look, make sure that the intellect, all the resources or all the gains that come out of any study, uh, the locals, from where the plant originated or from where the knowledge originated, they have their fair share of the profits and the intellectual property that comes out of them. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I just said the same thing to the ambassador over there because he was telling me that, very excited that he, he has a plant. He knows a plant. So you are really, I think you are the cutting edge. If, you talk, if that was your talk last year, yes. you were ahead of us. <laughs> you know, and, and it, it goes beyond. Maybe, maybe we should credit you for. Absolutely, maybe no, that's fantastic. No, I, it was, and I still have, um, if there was any recording, you have the presentation. I have the PowerPoint, you can see. I, 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 I exactly what you just said. Yeah, I basically exactly. said, you know, um, you know, one of the key things is to make sure that if you get a plan from Uganda, mm -hmm. right, and we did the studies, we developed the evidence base, mm -hmm. right, any intellectual property or patent, they have to get, you know, a reward from that as exactly. well. Those communities have exactly. to get a reward, yes. you know. So yeah, that's, you know, and what we could do, the idea about talking to governments is that just make sure that the government, if we're working with governments, that they create that, um, they facilitate that. Yeah. So it's not that we're doing it and then some government official takes it and, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting you say that because um, one of the things I, I was chatting about with the ambassador, I'm like, be honest, who, uh, I've heard that every medicinal plant has been patented by our Western world, by the Western world. Is that the truth? And yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> actually, just 13. I think 13 percent. I have some really, some some really good number. Only 13 percent of medicinal plants are actually known, mm -hmm. right? Like so, mm -hmm. you know, a huge amount of it. I can tell you. We actually tomorrow you see if you are here, you see we have an exhibit. He gave the talk uh, last last year about that. So we've been developing this plant that was discovered in Cameroon right. that uh, bleeds literally. So the title of the presentation is "Blood from Plants," yeah. and then what we started doing and looking at that was. You know, this, this plant has these remarkable properties. And then the Smithsonian Institute tried to find out what the species was. And they still haven't found it, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just saying that to say there are many of these plants right. that people don't even it's know yet exist. It's a huge so, untapped potential. It's a huge untapped potential. Absolutely. Here's my request to appeal to everyone out there in Africa. If you're a diaspora member, if you know of any plant, please reach out to us. You can reach out to me at africatoyou.vivian at gmail.com. We'll get back in, in touch with you, with the doctors, to talk about the medicinal plant that you know, and we'll take it from there. And if you have grandparents, please take videos of them talking about the medicine that it, even if it's your, your local language, we'll get interpreters, and then we can archive that information because we're gonna lose it if we don't archive it right now. And uh, then when we, at some point, we'll give it to the professional researchers, like these doctors who are knowledgeable about these things, and then we will save our continent. Yeah, and the person will get value from it. So they will also, the people, if you do that, you're going to get benefit. So we're not going to do that and then take away your knowledge. That's very important. So this is the collaboration that we're talking about. So every one of us can collaborate. <laughs> it's a win-win. And this is what the Global Health Cut List is about. It's not an elitist program. It is a, a program for meeting the needs of our communities. And each of us has a role to play. If you don't know a medicinal plant, spread the word. That is helpful. This is exciting and we appreciate each and every one of you. You're contributing immensely to the to humankind and not just and, and of course your proud sons and uh, sons of Africa. We can't be even more prouder and But I should say that you know we need people like you. You have all these great things if the people don't know about it. Yeah, so if the media is very important to let educate the public about these things. If you don't do that, it used to be that the first conference organized here, just cancer specialists here and I talking to each other, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, we can have some impact, don't get me wrong. But it's not the same when these policymakers, ambassadors, ministers come and they actually get educated and they're going to shape policy, right? So tonight you're actually going to hear from Karen Bass and she's the chair of the uh, U.S. Congress House for Global Health and uh, Foreign Policy. And what he's going to be talking about is, yeah, PEPFAR was the most successful, biggest foreign policy that any country, United States, has given. Right? It saved millions of lives, hundreds of millions in Africa. 
right, for non-communicable diseases. But now people are living longer, guess what's happening? If you live longer from HIV AIDS, you get cancer. Okay, you get non-communicable diseases. And so now the thing is you need to get these policymakers now and also invest in that. Um, and so if you don't talk to them, there's not going to be any policy. You know, yeah. and so we we'll have impact, but it's limited. You're talking about collaborators and government. How does the U.S. fit into this whole picture? But it's interesting to know that there's someone from Congress because at the end of the day, they are the decision makers when it comes to the budget and the location. Congress here on Capitol Hill on this. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's part of the education process, right? So you have to educate them. And I think some young three high school students were here from a local high school here, and they were trying to engage the government leaders. You know, one of the answers they gave that was very important was, you know, mobilize, engage your Congress people, educate, because, I mean, as you shape U.S. policy, foreign policy, which is America's very powerful thing, is the soft power that America has abroad, right? So if you can shape that, you know, to uh, invest in healthcare and the things that are coming up now and emerging, like cancer, um, that's a big win, right? Yeah, but when you, uh, much of the U.S. policy is centered mostly on uh, business, trade, and investment. That's and one example, right? Like I, you yeah, it is. But then um, it will be interesting to learn about how you're working with the U.S. government Absolutely. to have to integrate uh, some of your work into the U.S. policy. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I can tell you. That's, you want to? Yeah. Something? Just find out what yeah, yeah. before you. So uh, the uh, we are launching the FITO medicine program here on Sunday and then it's after we'll do the launch there'll be no looking turning back <laughs> you're just gonna go ahead as you already started with uh, soliciting for people to bring in whatever ideas they have once it's launched it's going to take off and yeah, so I'm ahead of the of the have nine million dollar <laughs> commitment to it so excellent off, yeah well, I'm so proud of you all, and uh, we look. I look forward to continued partnership. We have to spread the word. We will, each of us, again, it's a reminder, we each have a role to play. Do not underestimate your role. Every, every uh, commitment works, whether it's spreading the word, whether it's talking to your grandparents about medicinal plants, whether it's visiting the sun community where the sun people in Southern Africa know all kinds of spe plant species. Let's, we're in this together, join the Global Health Cut List team, and let's make a difference. Thank oh, you, right gentlemen. Now. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it was nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.